Hello and welcome to Cask Theology, a channel about theology and beer. And if you want to learn about golden ales, well, you're in the right place because I'm going to be cracking open these three bottles so that you know what a golden ale is. So let's get to it. So, I've got three golden ales, as per usual, and as per usual, got them from a shop. Uh, this one is Morrison's I've got these from. So, straight away, you can tell where a golden ale gets its name from. Look at that lovely golden colour. So, looking at the golden champion, you can see exactly where, where we're going with this. So, don't need to describe the colour, do I? So, let's start as we mean to go on and uh, explain golden ale for you. So we're going to open up this golden champion by the Badger Brewer. So why did uh, golden ales come to be? Well, pale ale has been around for absolutely donkeys, uh, but golden ale has only been around since the 80s or so, at least in its current form. Oh, look at that. There you go. You can see, you get exactly what you can See on the tin there, look at that. Uh, now the reason they rose to popularity from the 80s onwards is because during the 80s and 90s, beer was on a downslide. Yep, it was on a downslide in terms of pale ales and bitters and milds. They were all dying a death in the market. And who was winning? Well, lagers and ciders were, were taking over the market and this kind of freaked out some of the old school brewers. What do we do? Hmm, what to do? What to do? Ah, I know what we'll do. We'll tweak a pale ale to give the same vibe as your lagers and ciders. So that's what they did, and that's how it was born. Yeah. So essentially, it's just a pale ale, but with a bit of a tweak. So, next beer. We're gonna go for the St. Peter's golden ale i wonder what this is going to look like folks can you guess i think we can guess so ugh. let's open you up there i love these bottles on the st peter's there you go so we're two beers in and you can already see the kind of feel that the brewers went for. Look at that, you can kind of tell. Let's just uh, sneak him up there. Yep, you can kind of tell what they were going for. Uh, they wanted to bridge the gap between your pale ales and your milds and the, and the lagers. Uh, and well into the 90s, um, lager and cider. They were the top boys. And it's only really sort of late 90s and early 2000s that beer, like your pale ale, your mild, and all that sort of stuff has made its comeback. And I'll discuss why that might be in just a second. So they designed these uh, to sort of, they designed them to sort of kind of fit in with the rest of the beer culture kind of at the time. Because obviously lagers and ciders very pale like this, very, you know, they're, ob they're obviously fizzy. These are lightly carbonated. But at first glance, if you looked across the room, you'd think that was a lager or a cider because of the colors, you'd think it. Uh, so that was one of the reasons they did it uh, because that was the most, because they were the most popular, they thought, let's make it look like the most popular one. So the question is, the question is, did their little experiment work? Well, the answer is a resounding yes, of course. Let's open up this Wainwright while we discuss why. So, there's an old adage uh, or saying that gets that uh, I've heard in my time as a barman, and that's that you don't tend to drink what your dad drinks. History being a little bit cyclical every now and then. Oh, look at that. Look at all these lovely golden ales. That is properly golden. Let's just uh, get all these in shot. There we are. 
not much difference at all, is there? <laughs> Ooh, the Wayne White's gone a bit uh, fizzy as well. Mm. So, yes, old adage, you don't drink what your dad drinks. Now, in my generation, my granddad was an avid mild drinker. My dad, to this day, still drinks Carling and, and ciders. And me, well, I went back to ales. I'm, in fact, I'm quite a dark ale drinker. I do love a good dark ale. Although these, these ain't so bad. Mm. Let's give this one a whirl. Mm. Mm. Quite interesting. So yeah. Um, so with that in mind, the cycle, the cycle turned around again. So the newer generation of beer drinkers really, really liked this kind of stuff, especially when uh, craft ale became big in the 2000s. Whoosh. They grabbed a lot more of the old market share. Uh, and there's a good reason for that. They were designed to combat your lagers and your ciders by being easy going and chilled out. Now you can see, uh, or maybe, can you see it? Yes, you can see it with my new, nice new camera. That one's a 4.7. Oh, there we go. Focus, focus. That one's a 4.7. This one's a 4.5. This one's a 4.1. They all stay in that kind of range, much like lagers and ciders do nowadays. You know, and like lagers and ciders, uh, they're quite, quite drinkable, as in you can have a few of these. Um, they're not they're not sipping beers like say maybe your lambics, but they are very much a you can have one or two of them. Hence the popularity. In fact, they've become so popular uh, that Camera, the campaign for real ale, which is an organisation I will cover on this channel at some point. Do, don't you worry about that. They have, well, there we go, award-winning beer up there. These guys, the camera will do awards for beers every year and they had to invent an entirely new category just for golden beer because it got so popular. Uh, they had to do, yeah, I mean, they couldn't just stick it in the, the pale ales because they were so popular. Um, so here we have some UK gold ales. Can you get gold ale elsewhere? Yes, you can. Um, now, there's two places that I found you can get it, which are slightly different, of course. Us UK folks do like a different style of beer to, to those across the ponds. Uh, those fabulous Belgians, they do love a gold ale as well. Although they are, they're, they're more termed as blonde ales. Um, the difference between these ones and the blonde ales, they're a lot stronger. Um, so obviously a bit more of a to them. And um, the Americans, they do uh, golden ales as well, but they tend to lean more into the hoppy side of things. So they use a lot of their citra hops to just give it that slightly more bitter fl flavor. So they lean a bit more towards the, the, the bitter end of the pale ale spectrum on it, but retaining the color. So there you have it. Um, let tried something slightly different today. Uh, with this with this one sorry about the autofocus I'm using a new camera and it's just going absolutely bananas and I'm also I've got to tweak the settings on that but yeah I tried something new um, I thought I'd just jump straight into the beers this time around um, so what do you think is that a good idea I don't know if you do leave a comment uh, if you liked it leave a like um, and if you want to stick around and see some more beer or theology then why not wallop the little subscribe thing down there but until then uh, let's go grab a drink. I'm going to try this one now, actually. Mm. Oh, that's quite nice. Very fruity and floral. So until then, grab a drink and keep asking questions, and I'll see you next time.